Okay, uh, hi everybody. Welcome to part two of my lesson on solving equations using logs. Um, we left off in last video talking about this technique of taking the log of both sides and then using the power property to isolate our variable. And uh, if you were following along in the notes, you may have noticed that there was a story problem here as well. And I didn't go over this one in the last video, but I wanted to at least show you the solution here for anyone that would, that tried this one. And um, it's essentially like all the ones we did above, but we just start with a story problem where we're given this exponential function and we need to plug in eight for Y and then solve for X the number of years. And the first thing we do here is we isolate this term, right? So I divide both sides by 6.72. Once I've isolated that term, now I can take the log of both sides, and that allows me to use the power rule and pull the x down, and I'm dividing both sides by log of 1.014, and we get my final answer here. This would be like my exact solution, typing that into my calculator. I got about 12.54. Okay, so for the rest of this video, I wanna show you uh, two more techniques that you can use when dealing with logs and equations. And the first one will be solving equations that look like this. Equations that have logarithms in them already, right? In the last video, we saw a bunch of equations that did not have logs in them, but we used logs to solve the equation. Here, we have an equation, but log is already in the equation. So we need to come up with some ways to deal with that. Now there's many different ways to solve log equations. One technique would be to convert the log equation into exponential form. And so this would be a technique you'd use essentially anytime you have the log of something equals some value. And we've seen this a little bit already, but this is the first time we've really thrown a variable in there. But Converting this into exponential form allows me to solve this very quickly, right? This is log base 10 of x equals three. Changing this to exponential form, we would have 10 to the power of three equals x. Well, 10 cubed is 1000. And look at that, we just solved for x. So remember that when converting from log form to exponential form, if I have a log base b of x equals y, that can be rewritten as b to the y equals x. And so this is what I'm using to convert these. Okay, second example, same thing here. I have the log base three of x plus one equals two. Well, let's convert this to exponential form. I'm gonna do three to the second power equals x plus one. And notice how all of a sudden the equation becomes much easier. That's nine x equals eight. Done. Now, notice that here we do have a coefficient out front. Okay, so before we can convert a log into its exponential form, you want to make sure that log term is isolated. So in this case, before I convert, I'm going to divide both sides by 4 in order to get rid of that coefficient. And now I have log base 3 of x equals 5. Now I'm going to convert this 3 to the fifth power is equal to x. So 3 to the fifth power is 243, and we're done. So use this technique anytime you have, essentially what you're looking for is some log, logarithmic term on one side and some value on another. And anytime you have that, you can just convert and solve. But do be careful for issues like this, where you have a coefficient here, you may need to isolate this term first before converting. Okay, next technique. So we have all these great properties of logs, and we saw how we can use, <clears throat> excuse me, we can use these properties to expand logs or simplify logs, and it turns out that the reason we would want to do that a lot of times is so that we can solve equations involving logs. So let's take a look at example A here. Log 3x plus log 5 equals 1. Now, if I could somehow combine these two logs together, 
I would have a problem that looked a lot like these three that we did up here. And then I could just convert to exponential form. So let's do that. Now we're adding two logs and they have the same base, base 10. That means we can use the product property and I can kind of go backwards from the expanded form back to a single log. So let's rewrite this as log base 10 of 3x times 5. Well, that's 15x. So using that product property, I've combined these logs into one single log, and now I can convert this into exponential form. This is base 10. So 10 to the power of 1 is equal to 15x. Well, 10 to 1 is just 10. So dividing both sides by 15, I get 10 fifteenths equals x, or of course, 2 thirds. Isn't that nice? Try this one. Same thing. If we can combine these logs together, I can convert to exponential form and solve. So let's use the quotient property, which says the difference of two logs can be rewritten as a quotient. So log base 10. Now be careful here with the quotient property, the order is important, right? It's this first one minus the second one. And notice the first term, the M, goes on the numerator. So if I'm doing log x minus log 4, it's this x that's going to go in the numerator, and the 4 will go in the denominator. So log base 10 of x over 4 is equal to 3. <clears throat> now I have a single log that equals a value, <clears throat> so I can just convert this to exponential form and solve. So 10 to the power of 3 is equal to x over 4. 10 cubed is 1,000. Multiply both sides by 4. x is 4,000. Properties of logs are very, very, very powerful for this reason. We can take large equations that involve many logs, and we can condense it down into something that's more manageable. Let's take a look at a couple more. All right, so once again, I have a couple logs. They have the same base, and if I could combine these together, then I would be able to convert to exponential form and solve. However, I have this issue right here of this 2, this coefficient in front. Well, we have a way to deal with this, right? We have this power property that says that a term with an exponent, we can rewrite that by pulling that exponent down to the front. Well, the opposite is also true. If I have an expression like this, I can go backwards. I can take that coefficient n and move it back to being an exponent, which is exactly what I want to do here. So I'm going to move this 2 back up as an exponent. Using the power property, I can rewrite this as log base 10 of x squared minus log base 10 of 4 equals 2. Now I have two logs, no coefficients, they have the same base, they're being subtracted. I can use the quotient property to combine these two logs together. So rewriting this, I have log base 10 of x squared divided by 4 equals 2. Now I've got a single log equaling some value. I can convert this to exponential form and solve. 10 to the power of 2 is equal to x squared over 4. 10 squared, of course, is 100. We're going to multiply both sides by 4, so we get 400 on the left and an x squared on the right. And square rooting both sides, we'll get a 20. Let's try one more. Okay, so we have two logs. They have the same base, which is important which means it looks like we can combine these. They're being added. We can combine these using the product property. So rewriting as a single log, we're going to get log base 10 of... Now look, when we multiply these together, we get this. x times x plus 21. Now this is all in my log function here, base 10. And this will be equal to 2. Okay, so... 
Let's rewrite this as an exponential now because I have a single log equaling some value. So 10 to the power of 2 is equal to this, x times x plus 21. Now cleaning this up a little bit, we get 100 equals x squared plus 21x. Aha! Here we get an x squared. So now we're thinking back to our work with quadratics. It looks like I'm going to have to solve a quadratic equation here. So if I move this 100 over to get this into standard form, I get x squared plus 21x minus 100. And now it's a matter of solving this quadratic. Now, of course, I could always use the quadratic formula. However, I, I like to check to see if it's factorable first. And it turns out that this is factorable. This factors into x plus 25 times x minus 4. Setting each of these equal to 0, then we would get x equals negative 25 and x equals positive 4. Okay. So, just a few different ways we can use logs to solve equations. We can use log properties to combine logs together before converting to exponential form. We did that with these two as well, using the product property and the quotient property. And once you get that log equation down to a single log, we're converting into exponential form in order to solve. All right. I have some practice problems for you guys. If you'll notice in Google Classroom that I have posted uh, a list of problems to do from the textbook. They are similar to these equations. Um, I also posted a screenshot of that textbook page to make it easy for you guys to find. So try those problems on your own piece of paper. Make sure you're showing your steps as you go. Show all your work and that will be your required task this week. Get that assignment posted to Google Classroom and please, please, please email me if you have any questions or if there are any problems that you would like me to demonstrate and post to our Google Classroom, please let me know in the uh, weekly question thread and I will certainly post some solutions uh, if you guys need me to. Okay, I hope you all have a great week, of course. Uh, stay healthy, stay happy, and uh, we will talk next week. Take care.